Hello everyone, welcome to VTU e-Sikshana program. Myself, Professor Nitin Kumar, working as an assistant professor in Department of CSE, Vidyavartaka College of Engineering, Mysuru. So in this particular class lecture, so I will be demonstrating the input controls. So here I will be the resource person for this mobile application development. So till now we have developed, till now we have uh, uh, explained, I have explained more than uh, 13 videos on uh, various laboratory programs. In this particular video, I am going to explain the input controls. So what is input control? So what is input? What is output? Why? Because that's the uh, primary thing in any application development or in any programming language. In this particular video, I am going to explain how the input, input controls can be handled in the mobile application development. So uh, firstly, I will list out how many input controls can be used in the mobile application development. The first primary one is text view. So text view will be used to display the information to the user or to display the result. It's not an input one, this is an output one. So edit text or even you can call it as plain text which will be used to read the details. There are a lot of variations are present with respect to this edit text. If you want to read the password, then you will go with the password edit text. If you want to read the email address, then you can go with the email edit text. Like that we have a lot of uh, different varieties of edit text which are available in the Android Studio framework. Next, button. Even this is also input control. Why? Because if you click on any particular button that you are going to place in the activity, so that particular task should be triggered. So that's also the one which is going to take the input in the form of action, not in the form of text or not in the form of any uh, other parameter. It, it takes action as an input. Next, radio buttons and checkbox, etc. So these are some five samples that I have written that doesn't mean that only this many input controlling uh, widgets are available in the Android Studio framework. So these are some samples. So using these samples in this particular video, I'm going to demonstrate how to develop a simple application that will look like a student form. That will look like a student form where I'm going to deal the read the details of a student such as branch, semester, name and progress and I'm going to uh, display those details. I'm not going to pass those details to the database. Instead of that, I'm going to display the details in the form of a toast message. That's the objective of this particular lecture where I'm going to demonstrate how to make use of the input controls. So let's start the design. Observe. So first I will write the design. Before writing the design, firstly I need one answer from your rand. So what's the difference between radio button and checkbox? The common answer that I'm going to get from the students is the radio button will look like circular, the checkbox will like, look like a rectangle. That's not the correct answer. The right answer is, so with respect to checkbox, for example, I need to collect the hobbies of a student. For example, if what, what is your hobbies? Listening music, playing cricket. If you have multiple options, the, if, if the student is uh, giving the multiple options, then we are going to give this checkbox. So they can select multiple checkbox. Similarly, What's your agenda, male or female, where the student has to select only one, either he has to select male or female. In such cases, we are going to give the radio buttons. So while looking thus, both will look in the same manner. Just the thing is, the radio button, you can select only one selection. The checkbox, you can have multiple selections. How to make this radio buttons as a one selection? So the buttons that you are going to place in the radio button will be grouped. So will be treated as only one button. Either you have to select this one or you have to select the, this one. This is the primary difference any student must know what's the difference between the radio button and checkbox. Radio button is one selection button, checkbox is multi-selection button. So let's start, uh, first I will explain the design then we will proceed further with the demonstration. So I'm going to develop a simple uh, application. So it will be in the form of a form. This is how it looks like. So I'm going to prefer linear layout for this one. Why? Because I need, I'm developing a student application form. 
So for that the linear layout, layout is the well suited one. Why? Because the line in linear layout, so the things will fall one after the other. That's why I'm preferring the linear layout and the orientation is vertical. The orientation is vertical. So I'm going to add first edit text. The name is input controls. The application name is input control. The first thing that I'm going to add in this input control is a edit text or even you can call it as a plain text where I'm going to read the name of the user, name of the student. So one edit text is required to read the name. Next, I'm going to place three checkbox to select the semester. If a user select this one, this is third semester, fifth and seventh. So I'm going to read, I'm going to provide three checkbox to read the semester. Next, so directly I'm not going to place the radio button. Instead of that, I'm going to place the radio group. Inside that radio group, I'm going to place the radio button to get the gender of that particular student. So I'm going to place the radio group like this. So inside this radio group, I'm going to provide the radio button if male or female. Finally, I'm going to add a progress bar just to demonstrate the progress, how it works. So followed by a submit button. Just observe. So here I'm taking this many components are the widgets in my application to demonstrate the input controls. So totally one radio group. One radio group is required and please remember whenever you add radio group to into your application, you have to make sure that it will occupy the limited space. So if, you, if it occupies the whole space, so it will treat all the components which are there in that space as a uh, radio buttons. Okay, one radio group inside the two radio buttons. Next, one progress bar followed by one submit button. So how this particular input controls I'm going to handle here is, so here I'm, here I'm going to use the event handling. So how it works, firstly I'm going to enter the name, next I'm going to select the checkbox as a semester, next I'm going to select the gender and I'm going to give the progress and I'm going to click on the submit. So what are all the details that I have entered in this particular application should appear in the form of a toast message. What is the toast message means? It's a simple message that will appear, appear in your mobile, so in the form of a uh, blink so that even that will appear for a seconds not more than that so I am going to print the details which are there in this widgets in the form of a toast message one after the another this is the uh, overall demonstration of input controls so let's start the development of this particular thing so in this demonstration I'm going to show how to work with the various input controls in Android studio projects so let's open a new project where we can demonstrate various input controls that can be used in our Android Studio project. So as you all know, without input controls, the Android Studio project will become a static one. So we have a lot of input controls. Just we are going to demonstrate. I'm going to demonstrate seven to six, six to seven various uh, input controls which can be used in Android Studio projects and how to work with them. So let's start a new project. So and we are going to take a empty activity. Next. And I'm going to give the name as input controls. Why? Because we are going to work on input controls in this example. So the language is Java and SDK is 5.0 and finish. So the input controls will play an important role why because to read some data from the user and to make the decisions based on the values entered by the user for example if you are planning to read a uh, form the details of a student so in this example I'm going to demonstrate the details of how to read the details of a student in the form of a name in the form of a checkbox in the form of a radio button in the form of a uh, edit text 
and uh, seek bar so my project is ready firstly we will start with the design and we will finish off the design then we will come for the uh, implementation part so as i mentioned earlier here we are going to make use of various input controls it's better to go with the linear layout why because uh, so the form for, for example if you want to get a student details it, it should be in the form of a mm, registration form that i'm going to demonstrate in this example so that I'm, I'm going to change the layout before changing the layout i'm going to remove this text view which is not required for my example that i'm going to demonstrate right now so i'm going to change the layout i'm going to change the layout so initially it will be there in the constraint layout even you can use the constraint layout itself so i'm going to change it to linear so and after changing to linear i'm going to provide the orientation So done. So now just observe if you want to add anything like this, it will be it will fall like this, one by one in a vertical manner. So firstly I need to read the name of a student, that's why. So I'm going to make use of edit text here. So I'm going to read the name of the students, that's why I'm going to read edit text, even you can refer it as plain text. So insert that. So once after reading the name of a student, then I'm going to read uh, uh, the semester, whether the student belongs to third semester, fifth or seventh. For that, I will provide three checkbox. One, three checkboxes will be provided to read the semester. I will rename those checkboxes later on. Okay, so next I will provide a, a radio button or radio group to check. So first I will provide the radio group. Why? Because what's the difference between checkbox and radio button? It's very simple. If you are, if that particular uh, uh, entry is taking multiple entries, means that's what we call checkbox. So if you are, if you are allowed to give only one entry, means that's what we call radio button. Okay, so to make it as a single button, a radio button should be placed inside the radio group. Then only you can make it as a single button. Okay, so just observe, I'm going to select the radio group. So just, I'm going to drag it, drop it to my design. Just observe, it has occupied the whole left out part. But, so whatever the thing that you are going to place it inside here, it will be considered as a radio button. So that's why we need to resize this one. Just observe. I am placing a cursor here in the bottom and I'm going to resize this. So whatever you're going to place here, now it will be considered as a, whatever you're going to place in this space will be considered as a radio button. So now I will search for the radio button. I'm going to place those radio buttons here. One radio button, radio button two. Just I'm going to take the gender from this radio button. Just observe in the component we also can observe the change so these are the various components that we have inserted so edit text and three checkboxes and radio bar group inside that radio group we have two radio buttons so then i will make use of seek bar just to demonstrate the progress next lastly i'm going to use button So after filling all these details, once the user clicks on this button, those details should be displayed. That's what we are going to demonstrate in this particular video. That's what you are going to develop in this particular video. Just the thing is, I'm going to enter the name, I'm going to select the semester, I'm going to select the gender, and I'm going to select the progress of scene seek bar and I will submit and these values will be displayed. So the final outcome of this particular video will be, you're going to learn how to work with various input controls in Android application development. Firstly, I will rename all these components which I've added. I will go to code. So firstly, edit text is there. So the text that we see, uh, we are asking from the user is name. Just I will make it null and I'm going to add a hint to this one and I'm going to give the hint as enter student name. Next, we have first checkbox 
the text is present in the checkbox is just a checkbox i'm going to rename this one as third semester third semester Second checkbox, and I'm going to rename this one as fifth sem. Third checkbox, and I'm going to rename this as seventh semester. So next we have two radio buttons which are present inside the radio group. Just observe two radio buttons which are present inside the radio group. Okay. So just I'm going to change the text of that radio button that is firstly I will give mail and second radio button will be female. So next we have seek bars we are just we are going to drag this and we choose to show the progress and we have one button that's what we have here. So before we start with the uh, java part of this particular program firstly we need to rename this uh, various components that we have used with respect to the ids why because this is a very important part in our java part why because to recognize these components in our java part we need their ids so that's why we are going to define the various ids for the components that we have used in this design firstly i'm going to change the id of edit text and i'm going to rename it as just edit text so just remember one thing, you can give any ID that you want. There is no restriction that you have, you have to give this name only. Just the thing is, you have to use the camel case naming convention. The second word should be separated with uppercase letter. And initially, you must have at plus ID slash. That should be there. Okay, I have renamed that uh, ID of edit text to edit text one. Next, and I'm, and I'm going to rename the checkbox to checkbox one. Checkbox two, it's already there. Checkbox three then i need a radio group please observe for this i need the id which is not there that's why i'm going to add that component here just why i'm going to add your id at plus id radio button radio so rgb i'm going to give. radio group button so you can use any customized ids there is no problem with respect to using the customized ids you are not going to face any errors in that so next I'm going to rename the seek bar. So a seek bar, it's already there. There is no need of renaming. So why I have renamed all these IDs? So the name that I have given for the better reading of that particular form which we are developing right now. But the ID renaming is required whenever you want to develop application. Why? Because so for example, just consider if you are using 10 buttons. So first button for addition, second button for multiplication, three, third button for uh, division like that. So if you don't use sequential numbering, then you have to note down those IDs with the buttons in a separate sheet while doing the Java code. To overcome that drawback, we can make use of a uh, sequential numbering like this, how I have done right now. Just observe, there are three checkbox. There is no need of remembering the checkbox one, checkbox two. Just I have renamed it sequentially. Checkbox 1, checkbox 2, checkbox 3. This kind of sequential uh, rename, renaming the IDs will help you to easily recognize these components in your Java part. So just finally we will have a look at our design, how it looks. Just observe, enter the student name, semester, gender, seek bar and submit button. And even we can rename that button, submit. So text present in that button is button. I am going to rename it as submit. Done. Okay. So let's start with the coding part. Why? Because whatever we have planned to design, we have designed here. I guess there is no doubts. Just we have renamed the components name or the input controls name. And we have recognized the IDs of every individual. For this edit text, it's just edit text. First one checkbox one, checkbox two, checkbox three. So these two will come under RGB, radio group button, seek bar, seek bar, and we just, we have renamed the text of this button. So next start with the Java part. So it's a very important part, why? Because just by dragging, dropping the input controls will not serve the purpose. The actual coding will begin from here. 
Firstly, I'm going to define the variables which I'm going to use throughout in my program. First one is I'm going to use edit text. The reference that I'm going to give for the edit text is from here onwards, I'm going to refer the edit text by using a term edit text. Just I'm making of a use of a global variables. Checkbox. Checkbox one. Checkbox two. Checkbox three. From here onwards, I'm going to refer the checkbox by using checkbox one, two, three. So next, I'm going to refer radio group in my code. That will be referred by radio group only. Seek bar. Just observe here, what I am doing here is, it's very simple one, just I am representing the component name and I am giving the reference for this one. So instead of edit text, you can use E1. Instead of checkbox 1, 2, 3, you can use C1, C2, C3. Instead of radio group, you can use RG. Instead of seek bar, you can use C bar. So this is a component name. This is a reference. Thus, I have made it global, that's it. So now, we need to identify the component one by one. Firstly, we have this edit text, right? So that's what we are going to identify here. Edit text is equal to find it by the ID. What's the ID that we have, that I told you to record? That is edit text. That's done with the identification of edit text. Next, we have checkbox one. Find view by ID r dot ID dot checkbox one so next we have checkbox two find new by id we are going to recognize this by using its id that is checkbox two next checkbox three we, like this we have to identify all the three ids which are there in my design by using the ID of that particular component. Checkbox three. So finally we have seek bar. Find view by ID. What's the ID that we have given for the seek bar is just a seek bar. The last one, the radio group, just you have to use the reference, don't use the component name here. Find view by id or dot id dot what's the uh, RGB is that id that we have given for the radio group. Done. We are done with the identification of all the components which comes on our design. So this is, these are all the ideas that I've told you to remember or note down, same should be used for every individual component. Firstly, I have declared the reference for all the components, then I have tagged the ID for those components. From here onwards, we can refer those components which are there in the design part easily by using this reference name. Once after the identification by using the ID. So now, let's write a method by name, get to val. Public. Why? Because we are working with input controls, we have to get the value associated with those input controls, get val. So for every individual user defined method that you are going to write, for that you have to provide the view. Why? Because that, visible, that uh, change should be visible in the uh, output screen. So first I will declare a string, string name. Why? Because name is the string that we are reading from the edit text. So I am referring it, edit text get that uh, text and convert it to string. Why? Because whatever you're going to enter that will be in the form of text. Why? Because the component name itself is a text. So I'm going to read that uh, text and I'm going to convert it to string and I'm going to print it in the form of a toast message. Toast dot make text this keyword I'm going to use. Why? Because we are going to make use of multiple toast messages in this particular program. Name 
toes dot length long dot show okay done we are done with the reading and printing the data associated with the edit text next one is with respect to the checkbox so checkbox one dot whether it is checked or not it's an inbuilt method to check whether the particular checkbox has been clicked by the user or not if it has been clicked then i'm going to print this message that is toast dot make text this so before you print the toast message firstly you have to read the content that is there in the checkbox in the similar manner how you have read it the, with respect to the uh, edit text that is string c1 i will give the reference as c1 with respect to checkbox what we are working here we are working with respect to checkbox one dot get the text get text and convert it to string now print the toast message toast dot make text this keyword so what we are printing here we are printing c1 it's nothing but the content associated with the checkbox one length long and show it so next scene if checkbox 2 is checked if the user has clicked on checkbox 2 then we have to stay read that particular value associated with the checkbox 2 in the form of a string c2 that is there in the checkbox 2 dot get the text and convert it to string and print that message in the form of toast message make text this keyword and c2 length long dot show so if similarly if checkbox 3 is checked string c3 or in checkbox 3 get the text and convert it to string and print that in the form of a toast message so the reference that we have given for the text is 3 3 and print the duration how much duration it should be printed whether we have only two option which is length long and when one one is length short generally we are not going to use length long length short so because it will not visible as so it's going to wind up as soon as the output gets visible so next one is we are done with uh, the headed text and we are done with the checkbox the next one is the radio group why well, because we have two options we have given two options there one is uh, gender male and female we have to recognize that based on the id so first i will define id is equal to what's there in the radio group dot get radio button id means I, here i'm going to select the particular radio button value based on the id of that particular radio button so i will declare that radio button here radio button not group radio button so i'm going to use the reference is equal to find view find view by id or so that id that you are going to get so once you call this method so next i'm going to use the string based on the id means what are the so what which radio button you have selected that particular id associated radio buttons value should be stored in the form of string rgb so get that text convert it to string and make the toast message based on that toast dot make text this so that is nothing but rgb length long dot show so we are done with the radio group it's very simple please observe firstly we are getting we are calling a method called get 
check it radio button so based on that we are calling a high identifier by using a method find bui by id so which button has been radio button has been selected by the user that value has been read it in the form of rgb and that should be printed in the form of a toast message to the user so the last one the component that's the that is seek bar so seek bar is a simple example that i have used in this example to demonstrate the proof that seek bar i so we are calling seek bar and we are calling inbuilt method by name get progress get progress and that progress should be printed in the form of a toast message that's what we are going to make your your toast dot make text just keyword and the progress that we are collecting in the form of i has been printed here long dot show so this is the complete code the method name is get values firstly i am reading the values associated with the edit text and i am printing in the form of a toast message next i am selecting i am checking the three checkbox whether they have checked or not if they have checked the value that is associated with the checkbox will be recorded as uh c1 c2 or c3 and that particular c1 c2 or c3 will be printed in the form of a toast message so next i'm going to consider the radio group or radio button based on the id that particular radio button which radio button has been selected that radio button has been the value associated or the string associated with the radio button will be stored in the form of rbg and that has been printed in the form of a toast message finally i'm printing the progress of a seek bar the method name is get value by placing this just by placing this method will not serve the purpose of the application that we are developing right now so just we have to go to the code part of the design and we have to place this method so inside the button where we have placed the you know, text as submit here i'm placing this method so by using a attribute by name on click method name is get value so generally Uh, it's a very simple program, but the problem associated with this program is so just you have to note down the IDs that you are using in your program. So if in case if you fail, so if you miss any particular, if you have done a mistake in identifying the code using ID means the whole purpose, whole application will not execute. So in some cases there might be dependencies. Ah, uh, so inside the Gradle script maybe. a problem with respect to seeing the output just uh, bring it down this dependency values so that you can easily get the output just observe so i am bringing down the dependency values of the implementation to 1.41 and uh, the material to 1.60 otherwise you might face some errors after bringing down you have to synchronize this so that uh, the latest version what is what you have uh, gradle scripts have been synchronized should be uh, present with respect to the project so it has been synchronized now i will execute this and so that we can see the output so it's a very simple program the outcome of this particular program is to how to work with the various input controls which are there in the android studio or android application development so just i have designed a simple student form so using that student form you can read the details of the students and i am not passing the details of a student to any particular database or anything else just i am reading the uh, details of the student and i am printing those details in the form of a toast message to uh, ensure that uh, the data has been so the data has been efficiently used or efficiently retrieved using the various input controls so which are there in the android studio just the thing is whenever you get this kind of problems with respect to emulators go to this avd manager and you can wipe the data so that uh, so that your emulator will become a new device and it might take another 2 to 3 minutes to turn uh, come online but uh, you can see the output why because if you are working with the systems with very um, 58 gb ram systems so why because it will other your uh, android studio itself will occupy around 6 to 7 gb ram so that uh, this kind of problem may arise in such scenarios go to this avd manager and select that particular uh, 
component and wipe the data. So afterwards you can see the output in the emulator. So is the mobile device, can you please observe in my screen, the mobile device is available, just it is rebooting, it may take 2 to 3 minutes. So once after that I will show the output to you guys. So waiting for target, all target device to come online. So pixel is starting. So once it starts, so the application that we have developed right now will apply, uh, will be visible in the output. So just I'm going to give the input or I'm going to fill the form that we have developed and I'm going to wind up this session. This video will be completed. So installing my particular application that I've developed. So just make sure that with respect to Gradle scripts, whenever you face any errors with respect to Gradle scripts, so so you can code go to this second folder module and bring down the values. Just observe the output is screen is available here. I'm going to enter the name. My name is Nathan Kumar. And I'm going to select the semester. I belong to third sem and the gender male and I'm going to set a seek props to seek pop some value and I'm going to submit just observe Nitin Kumar third sem male and 52% is the progress that's all this completes how to this this is a simple demonstration example to learn how to work with various input controls such as text, checkbox, buttons, radio groups and radio buttons and seek parts. Thank you.